welcome to uh, Watercolor Studio 42. And I thought I'd do something relative to uh, Valentine's Day. They, uh, they have all sorts of little patterns and this, that, and the other thing. And this is kind of, kind of a made up, like I was saying, it, m m there might be some sort of a plant like this. But there is another one called a bleeding heart that, that has all these little upside down heart shapes. Uh, and uh, it, it's a, an attractive plant, uh, but uh, I thought I'd do something a little bit open, you know, ha have a little bit more flair to it. But the, uh, the heart shapes will be uh, pink or reddish color. The background, I think I'll do um, maybe something a little livelier. I, I usually do backgrounds, uh, usually a lot of times blue. Of course, outside is usually blue sky type of thing. But I thought I'd try uh, like uh, maybe similar to the color that we have in our kitchen. Nice bright yellow. So we'll, we'll try to see how that works for the background. We have tile ha half and half, you know, the, the bottom half of the wa uh, kitchen walls are tile and then we have the uh, yellow plastic wall uh, above that. And uh, so we have a bright, brighter yellow. It used to be wallpaper there, but we, we had them plaster right over the wall, that all, wallpaper. There was a paper that's hard to remove. So this fellow came in and said, you know, I can plaster right over that. You don't have to try to take the wallpaper off. So he just put, put a couple of coats of plaster right over the wallpaper. It's been fine. Looks great. Uh, put a little bit of color like that. It, like I said, the lower part is uh, tile, sort of a, 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 a ivory colored tile. Okay. Now. Um, this this particular idea is good because uh, I'm I'm using permanent black ink. You can use any colored ink, but make sure it's permanent because uh, otherwise, it, if if you wet the paper, it's going to blur. You know, so it is um, permanent ink, and um, you, like I said, I have a set of different colors, but I have a tendency to go with the uh, darker color. Um, so we'll lay the background in and go from there. Like I said, the lower part of the wall is tile. I think, I don't know, this is just a, I don't know what I put that there for, just a sort of a molding, you know, that, that goes around that, that tile part and then Go from there. Okay, looking forward to spring, I'll tell you that. The groundhog came out, I guess, the six more weeks of winter. There's probably six more weeks of winter left, anyways, on the calendar. <laughs> but I don't mind. I don't mind it warming up at all because uh, I'll tell you, we have, we have electric heat and, and uh, once you turn on the, yeah, you know, the thermostats, every room has a, a thermostat and you can close down the rooms you're not using, which we, we have, but uh, it still gets expensive. They told us when we had the house bill, oh, electric heat is a thing in the future. Well, maybe. But then uh, some of those uh, energy electric plants, they kind of closed down a bit. Okay, so we got the, dropped in a little ba background. Uh, we'll give the table a little bit more of a contrast. Maybe make that a little deeper. This is sort of like a, well, grayish color. 
light, light a color. Actually, my table at home is sort of a maple, and but that's no problem because we can always put a little bit of a more color into it. That's the beauty of watercolor. You can lay all these washes one on top of the other here. And if you want to lighten it up, you just blot it before it dries in. Uh, when I do this type of, uh, of drawing, it's good uh, because I'm using a marker and it does show up. I'm, I'm quite sure a lot of times when, when I, I've done these sketches, uh, you can't pick it up too well on television because I do do it in light pencil. But uh, when, when you do it in marker, uh, of course, it makes the whole thing different. The only problem is uh, you don't want to always uh, have uh, markers, uh, you know, kind of outlining everything. But um, I, I, I like the idea, I've done it before with uh, some paintings. I have a lot of luck with some uh, of those white Easter lilies one time. I, I did it like a stained glass window with the dark, darker, thicker outlines. And uh, I sold a couple of those. I, got, I think I still have one left. Okay. All right. As far as the art world, Lately, it's been uh, almost every, like everything else. Everything's kind of closed up, shut down, restaurants, and you name it. And, um, of course, uh, art shows, you know. I always get involved with the flower show at the museum, but that's, that's closed down again this year, unfortunately, you know, to, because that was a good, uh, that was a real good event. It's a smaller show compared to Boston and Providence and all those other larger cities, but it was just a good community thing, and uh, you kind of got the feeling that, oh, gosh, spring is just around the corner. So, anyways, um, now I can put just a little bit more um, color into this probably later on. There's going to be some kind of background color eventually. Okay, that's good. This is a uh, paint gray with just a little pinch of blue. All right, just a little bit. So anyhow, so the art world and mo most everything else has kind of been slow. It shut down, a lot of folks out of work, etc. Not too happy a time. All right. Now, um, I usually start off with the big brush. This is a one inch flat brush, and uh, I usually start off with that because you, uh, for the most part, I always put in the background color, especially for like a still life painting. And then I start in working on uh, the, the green part. And uh, so I did put a light wash of water on before I got started here. See, by patting it, you kind of, you're lifting a little bit of the color out, but it's already starting to set up in drying because I didn't really wet the paper that much. So now we're going to take a, a little smaller brush here. Uh, not that one. Let's try this one. There you go. Uh, around. And I'm going to do some of the, uh, the, the uh, petals. Now, what I do a lot of times, I take some of my uh, sap green, a little darker green, and... Um, You get, get plenty of contrast there. Of course, with watercolor, you know, if you want to make the color lighter, you just add uh, more water to it. You don't have to uh, add any white into it. You can put white into it, but then it gets kind of opaque watercolor. 
That means it's, it's not so translucent as it was. So some of these some of these uh, petals, I just just kind of touch them a little bit, and um, see what happens here. Now you can add more stems, more uh, leaves, and so forth if you want. I usually one, two, three, four, five, usually an uneven number. Okay. And usually a stem, you can make this a little bit thicker through here. I don't want to get into too much of that. The background yellow might still be a little bit wet, but we'll put a little bit of the stem in and uh, so forth. Um, now, I dropped some, some of that green in, but now I can take my brush and kind of pull it around a little bit, kind of fill it in. And of course, um, for the most part, you can stay inside the, uh, the marker. But sometimes, if you go outside, that doesn't matter as much. It's another technique that uh, you can use where you can just put little patches of color in. Now, I get that a little bit wet so I can pick that up. Probably reshape that a little bit more. But that's what you can do. I consider this uh, this style of painting is more like uh, almost you do you draw the picture and then you kind of fill it in. It's almost like doing a coloring book. The only difference is that you're making your own picture, making up your own picture. Let me just touch that up a little bit there. Here we go. Now, uh, you, you can go out here on the little stems and so forth, but I'm, I'm not going to touch that right now because the background might still be a little bit wet. Now, the next thing I might do, I can do the, uh, the color of the vase. I can keep it sort of a white color. Uh, uh, a lighter color, or we'll see what happens. Now, I definitely, when I do the, um, the, the flower itself, I want to get into some of my reds. I use a, like a, a, a permanent red. Um, it's sort of a, they call it deep. That means it's a deeper, darker color, darker red. And then I have my other one that I use with it. It's, um, it's actually it's a lizard crimson, but they call it quin quinacridone rose. But when you look it up in the book, it has it's the same ingredients. Quinacridone rose is uh, is um, a lizard crimson. Now you can. Put a little drop of that on each one of these. And then you can kind of, uh, what I usually do is wet the brush and take that and pull it around. You can also wet that area first. Just drop a little puddle of water, just a slight amount of water in there and just pull it around. But either way, uh, you, can, you can do it. Now, if you do go outside the, the area, that's not the end of the world because you can always blot that. And you can put like a little bit of a shadow on the back wall to hide that little bit of extra paint that got up, 
got away. But watercolor painted, paintings, they're not, um, if you notice that they are water, obviously, and so there is that freedom, there's a little bit of fluidness about, about it. I'm going to show you a little bit what we're doing here. I keep wetting it down. You know. And let's say if I want to add a little bit of highlight in, into the, uh, the plant, what I do is take um, a clean <laughs> piece of towel here and while it's still wet, you can put a little bit of highlight back into the uh, plant. Now, wherever the, you want the light to come from, let's say it's coming from left to right, you can put the towel onto that wet area and see how you can bring out the highlight. And uh, then uh, if that's the light side, then the, obviously the left side light and then the back side could be a little bit deeper. Uh, that can be another glaze of paint that you might want to put on. Now, you can also take a brush and you can kind of use the brush, wet the paper, and just keep lifting some of the color out like this onto your paper towel. I went over the edge a little bit, but that's okay. I can just kind of touch that up. Like that, and um, but uh, again, uh, like I mentioned, while it's wet, you can come in. Sometimes, if you're working on a real small area, uh, what I do a lot of times is use a Q-tip and just touch it, uh, touch it with a Q-tip. Okay, let's go. Keep moving along. You can do some of these others. Okay. Now, the beauty of watercolor, you can let it sit there for days, and just as soon as you hit it with the water, you, you reactivate the color. You can't do that with everything. Acrylic paint, my gosh, you put it on, it dries, it's like a plastic base. You, could, you can't get it off. Probably use sandpaper or something to, to get the color off. When I say sandpaper, it has to be fine, fine grade. Otherwise, you, you'll wear right through the paper. Okay, let's make sure you get a clean towel here. I'm going to just kind of blot that a little bit more there, put a little highlight on that one. Okay, let's do this one here. See how you can reactivate the color? Just wiggle the, the brush through it and... Loosen up that, that pigment. There you go. All right. Now you can you can put other color into this uh, color you have. If you want to uh, mix a little bit of purple, you know, take the red and add a little bit of a blue, make a, a purple color. That's probably what I'll do. See how light you can get it? You, you water it down until you make a, uh, the, that color almost pink. So let's hit it a little bit on this side, the left side. Give it a little bit of highlight. Okay, this one up here, water it down. The paint dries relatively fast. And if you're outside painting, you've got the sun that dries it even faster. And if there's any sort of a breeze coming along, that's gonna dry your paper faster too. And things that work differently too, uh, sometimes uh, if you're painting in an area that's uh, sort of moist, 
uh, forget a rainy day, you know, that type of thing. You can't paint out in the rain, of course. But if it is one of those wet days, you might be painting on the porch or something like that. And uh, when you do that, um, it takes a lot longer to dry. If you sell, if you paint in the cellar, you might need a yeah dehumidifier, dehumidifier, and that will help dry things up a little bit more. Don't want to miss a little flower here, and a little blossom. So that that gives you an idea. Now, if that's too open you can always add more to it. But if you go back to your marker, you have to make sure that the uh, watercolor is dry because markers don't work on a wet surface. They don't work at all. Now, I'm just gonna, this is, this is gonna be the shadow side, so that's gonna be darker. But I, I mentioned putting a little bit of uh, blue into that. I can get my blue clean enough to make purple here. There we go. That this is purple now going into it. See on the shadow side? That's over here. And if you do that, you just have to make sure that it's light. It's a kind of a lighter shade of purple. I suppose you can Use your brush like pick it, pick up some of the color, and just put it on the opposite side where the, the light's coming from. Now you can also take your paper towels, find a clean spot, and you can also blot it. You know, kind of hit it and blot it in. All right. Now, if I do do something that gets a little bit out of the way here, you know what I do a lot of times? I make a shadow on the wall, or I put another little stem or something, or, or <laughs> something in the background. Um, let's put a little bit more sh shadow on this side over here. Here we go. You kind of give every every area a little bit of the color, distribution of the color. But when you put shadow in, it makes the object more three-dimensional. Now, if that's, let's we'll say that's too pink, I can come back and Hit it with a little brighter color in there. Just pull that around. Kind of blending your colors on the paper a little bit. All right, clean up the edge a little bit. Yeah. Okay, a little bit of purple on this one. We're going around. Just kind of touch them up a bit, you know, kind of distribution of the color. Okay. Now, not every petal has to look exactly alike. In fact, most, on most plants, that, that doesn't happen at all. They, 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 they have, of course, basic similarities, but uh, the, the shading 
might be a, a little, little bit different. It's even just on fruit, it's the same way, like peaches, they'll have a different texture, uh, color, and then uh, uh, apples are similar to that idea too. They have a different color, green, yellow, so forth, and then, and then patches of red. They, they each have their own little personality. So you kind of touch them up a little bit. Now, if that's still a little bit open, eventually probably I could add some more stems coming in and out. But you have to test the paper, make sure it's dry. I usually use the back of my hand because sometimes you have a little bit of oil on your fingertips, so whatnot. Now, I can make, leave this sort of a whiter color, but I could also um, make it look like it's a, 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 a solid white, but it has a little bit of shine to it, like uh, similar to uh, how they make up uh, the surface on tea, tea cups and coffee cups and all that. So let's try that. Let's use some of the color I have here and this is going to be the dark side. Use some of that color. And then if you want some highlight in there, you can just leave the paper itself a little bit open. They call it, sometimes they call that uh, sort of like having a window. And you, you can uh, use some of that color. Let's put a little bit more of that blue into it. And it picks up some of the color that you might have on the flower, too. You'll probably notice if you look at some of the uh, paintings in the galleries here, there, and whatnot, uh, they, they, the artists usually repeat the colors, the same color more than once in, in different areas of, of, of their picture. And that kind of pulls everything together. That's something to keep in mind when you're painting. You can leave some some highlight on the side. And this can get a little bit darker over here too also. And just kind of to pull that out, pull that across. Now what's going to be also darker is the shadow underneath. And uh, sometimes it will reflect some of the color on here. Now the thing is that uh, you, don't, you want to make that smoother because it is. You don't want to make it too, uh, too much uh, white coming through. Right on this side, coming around like this, clean up the bottom, pull that back in, right across the bottom, just pull that back up. Okay, and you get that color in there. Now, uh, if you get a little bit on the table, if you go over the edge, that doesn't hurt too much because by the time we get through, we're going to probably put some more sh shadow on the tablecloth anyways, or whatever it might be. Right down there. I'm not going to touch that just yet, but I, I'll get back to it. There we go. So you, you kind of get the idea how that works. Now at home, I don't know if you tried to do some uh, painting uh, winter scenes. I've been doing that a couple of times. Um, the thing is that uh, doing the the, uh, the snow on the trees and whatnot. Uh, that's something that 
you probably might want to practice. I'm put it, making this darker a little bit. And we'll put some shadow right underneath here, right under the, the uh, container, right around there. And that can come out here, sort of, sort of like the shape of the, uh, the bowl, but see, it, it makes it look more three-dimensional. You give it anything, uh, kind of a, a shadow, it says, oh, you know, I must exist because I'm casting a shadow. Uh, but it, no, it, it just kind of makes it jump out a little bit more if you do that. Um, you can do the same thing. You try this color. Let's say this this looks too open, so you can actually, if the background dry enough, you can kind of put a little cast shadow on the wall in back of the plant. You have to be careful; you don't go getting carried away. But that shadow has to be pretty much, you know, on the. Uh, the side where the shadow would be mostly show up like in through here on the on the right side right side of this and you don't want to make that uh, shadow too d d uh, noticeable so what I usually do is just kind of pull it out blend it out like that But see, that kind of gives that a little bit more. Now, the problem is, sometimes when you do that, you you take away the, uh, the color of the leaf. So what you do is you, you can do, uh, you can make the leaf lighter by blotting it, but also you can come back and also ma make the leaf itself darker. Little shadow of that leaf back there. It just helps to kind of fill in that sort of solid background. I don't want to get that shadow too dark. Around here. Let's see, it's going to be over here a little bit of shadow. And a little bit up in here on the wall. Now, the further away the objects are from the wall, the, the shadow, the edge of the shadow softens out. But if it was right up against the wall, you'd see a real tight um, contrast there. Here we go, some back here. Remember, I didn't put my color on the stem, but you can kind of perk it up a little bit. Shadow. There you go. Put a little bit more in back of this one. You can take some of that um, where you go over the edge, that's where you can soften that out. That's one of the things you can do a lot of times. Up in here, over here, right side shadow, right side shadow. It gives us a little bit more body. And even this background wall I want that to show up a little bit more on the contour here. Maybe, I don't want to get too much green into it though. But it may have some green. Let's blot that. See, yeah, take some of that out of there. Okay, get some of those specks out of there. Okay. Now, we're coming along pretty well. Um, I'm going to do this side over here, put some sh uh, color over here. What you give to one side, you have to give to the other. 
going to counterbalance it. And even the wall will have a little bit of cast shadow from the uh, the uh, the bowl or the pot, whatever. Might have something that looks like this. You know, make that a little darker. Okay. I carried away too much with this. I just have to take it out, blot it out, lighten it up a bit. There you go. So you have something like that. Now, uh, what I'm going to be doing also, I'm going, I'm going to make sure I put some tape around here, but I'm going to make sure that the outer area is has a little bit more contrast so that when I pull the tape off you got the white 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 border showing up a little bit more just drop a little raw sienna in there on the back wall there we go oops yeah I just contrast that I think I did that uh, one week when we did the snow, because you'd have the snow, uh, white snow, up against a white mat, and so that's, you want to make a kind of a cleaner distinction between one, one and the other, kind of a contrast, you know, kind of important to have. Now, if that's too dark, I just kind of wiggle some water into it, take the edge away. And coming down here, I can come across here, make this, make sure that it's a little darker. Now, uh, you, you, you always want to leave some room. I usually sign mine uh, down on the bottom left-hand corner or over on the right-hand corner, mostly out of sign. I tend not to ever sign, well, I don't think it's a good idea to sign up in the sky area when you sign a painting. Some people do, but it's very distracting to have uh, the lettery up in the sky pot. And you so soften this out. Okay, a little darker across that in this corner. I could use a larger brush too. I'm using a smaller brush, you don't have to. There you go. Now a lot of times when you look at your painting the next morning, it's going to look a lot different. It's going to look a lot uh, lighter. So you may have to come back and let's say if a, a leaf or whatever is not showing up, like this one down here sort of disappeared, you may have to touch it up with a little bit more green, 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 and bring out more contrast. And even if your colors, you want the plant to look brighter, you can always put more uh, color, another uh, wash of color into the, uh, the plant area. And give each, each one a little bit, you know, a little bit of uh, whatever you paint in there. You just add it to the others. Now, um, of course, you you can kind of clean this up a little bit and uh, do different things with it. If you if you feel you need to push the color a little bit more, that's not a problem. 
make it a little bit darker. But you know what I, I might want to do? I started to get a little bit much with the, with the color. You know, if it's, you, can, you can come back, remember earlier on, you can blot it. And you can put back, you can get some of that highlight back in there by blotting it out. So the way it goes, I think um, the balance of all this is not too bad. I think this is too light through here. So I want to get uh, a little bit more contrast. And I'm just going to go up here, take a little bit of Payne's Gray and add that into some of my blue. And let's give this another a wash over here. See how you can pull that out. Now, what you're always looking for is to kind of counterbalance. Now, if I use some of this color on the, uh, the pot, the container, um, you can also kind of use it uh, somewhere, maybe, maybe in one of the, or uh, all of the plants, you put a little touch of that color in there, carry that color over into the, uh, the rest of the uh, painting that you do. You might need a little bit more contrast down here. Just, I'd go across the bottom and just push that up a little bit, you know, so you, so you have a contrast there. Um, you can do whatever you, you, you'd like to have done. Um, if this gets a little bit blurry through here, uh, a lot of times you can take uh, a marker even uh, and a uh, permanent marker and just come in with a little bit more color. You can't do it while it's wet, but you can do it after it's dry and just add a little bit more color on the stem. This, this here, this is a little bit too light on the edge too. So what I do is come across, page gray. I, I picked up a little sepia there too. And you can go over the edge again. Okay, go over that edge, something like this. And usually I just take it and soften out the bottom. You can keep the top edge a little sharper, but then you can pull this out here down to the edge, just erase it. Okay, something like that. Now, if there's any detail that you want to add to it, like you have these little uh, things coming out, you could probably take a little bit of uh, yellow, maybe Put a little bit in there, kind of give each one again a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. If that, you know, whatever you want to add to it. So the way it goes. Now, if you let this dry, you can go come back in. I, I don't know if it's dry enough, but you can always come back in with your marker. I don't have one out handy. I've got one underneath here somewhere. Probably, yeah, something like this. It's a pretty good sized marker, but you can you can. Let's we'll see if it's dry enough. Probably not, <laughs> but you can go over a little bit of the contour and just you know pull it out a little bit more wherever you want uh, something to show up more and uh, touch it up. Uh, especially on uh, some of the stems, you might want to go back over. You can't do it too well, that was still wet. In here, you can kind of bring out some, uh, some more texture in there so far. But uh, that's the idea of that. Now, um, there's always a little bit of touch up to do. The next day, you, you look at your painting and, and if anything, it may need a little bit more uh, color because what happens is watercolor does um, absorb in um, overnight when it dries. And uh, let's see if I can start some of this tape. All right. 
have to be careful tearing on a 45 degree angle so it doesn't damage the surface of the, the watercolor paper. But that helps clean up the edge a little bit. It gives you the idea of what it would look like if you put a mat on it. I usually cut, uh, a lot of times I cut a double mat and uh, if I have a, like a little colored liner on the inside of the white, I usually uh, pick a color that uh, I don't have enough of in my painting. Okay, here we go. Yeah, There's a little piece up in the corner here. So that gives you an idea, um, gives you an idea of what it would look like with a mat. And then of course you got the frame outside of that. And uh, I usually pick a, a sort of a, a deeper color, maybe a, a black frame or, or a deep brown or something uh, to pick up, uh, you know, not to be overly, uh, uh, overwhelming, you know, your painting. And then uh, if it's dry enough, you just put your signature down here, across the bottom, either on the left side or right side. And sign it, and that's it. Now what I do a lot of times, uh, I don't frame my artwork too much because uh, then you're talking about the weight of the wood and the glass, and if you're transporting your work somewhere. So what I usually do now, I finish it, put a, a mat on it, put it in a clear plastic wrap, one of those little bags, seal it, and uh, use a paper clip or something, clip it up on the back of my display panel, and then hope, hopefully somebody will buy it. <laughs> so, but, uh, that's the idea of uh, doing that. So um, I'm kind of finishing up a little bit ahead of time uh, today. Um, I wanted to just show you uh, this one from last week. I think this was, this was the last time we worked on it. Now this one came out and you see how it dries See how the picture dries? It dries lighter. So what I need to do is come back in and take some of my um, blue, maybe uh, some of my ultramarine blue and some of my sepia blue. Oh, not sepia, what am I talking about? <laughs> the uh, phthalo blue, okay? And maybe the water has to be darker into here. And when you do that, then of course the trees will jump out a little bit more. I wanted to show you something like this because I've got to finish up a good a few extra minutes so I could show you how that works. See, if you make the water, cut that back right in there, and that just helped bring everything out. Now, that particular shade, it's a little bit, I may mixed it up in a hurry, but that can be uh, reused uh, in the shading in the tree. That some of the shadow pick up that color or around the base of the tree. Repeat some of that color in there. And that kind of carries that color around in your painting. Now you notice that off in the distance, there's supposed to be some mountains there. We're, we're kind of losing them. We need to bring out, I'm just going to use some of my uh, paints gray and see where they don't show up enough. I'm just going to go over those mountains a little bit. The clouds are very soft around in, in, in the sky there. But by putting some of that darker color up in here, see how you can bring out the, the mountains a little bit more. So this is what I do sometimes uh, uh, in some of my other classes too. 
If we don't have time to finish the picture, uh, you finish it at home, then you bring it back in, and you talk about what what your picture needed to kind of finish it off. This one needed uh, more contrast to make the the tree show up more. Okay? You get that darker background, and all those those trees will jump out in here more. In the, the ones in the foreground. But it's just that little bit of touch up sometimes it doesn't, makes a difference. And sometimes you don't see it until the next day after, when you look at your picture and say, oh, now I know what it needs. It needs a little bit of da more red or dark, darker color. You might see where this is, this one's drying now. You might want to come back in. Let's see if I can get the right shade here. You might want that to show up a little bit more right on that edge. So you just come back into it and you can bring bring that out a little bit more. This is kind of fading up in there too. So this probably needs a little bit more of a shadow around in there. But th there's things like that that you, that you, you can pick up uh, afterwards, okay? I wanted to do, make sure the uh, the water line is sort of straight. See how it bows in. You want to make sure that's nice and straight across there. Water seeks its own level. It doesn't kind of run uphill. Just levels off. It runs down the hill, but not <laughs> up the hill. Okay. Now, sometimes, you know what I do, Sue? I put some little footprints in there, animal f tracks, just to add some texture to it. Okay, so I guess I'm kind of running out of time a little bit today, and uh, so I'm thinking about what, what we can do next week. We're into uh, February, and uh, so, we still have plenty of snow. I guess it could snow. <laughs> Hopefully not as much. And uh, maybe do something else. I'd like to, uh, I, I don't know if I've done, um, yeah, I know I've done a covered bridge before. So, but I might find another barn or a building that we could do. Okay, so that's that. <laughs> And um, finishing up a little bit earlier today, but brushes up and we'll see you next week, okay?